Hey everyone, welcome back to Reissued. If you're new here, my name is Andrew. Today we are back on the IKEA hack train and we are gonna be hacking the San Vidal roller shade from IKEA. This shade is perfectly fine to begin with, but I wanna make it feel a little bit more luxe, a little bit more custom, and a little bit less like a roller shade. This is a little bit of an experiment today. I'm not 100% sure this is gonna work, so wish me luck, let's jump on it. So a couple weeks back on my channel, I mentioned that I was looking for window treatment options for my studio and for my bedroom. I was super inspired by this image, and at the time I didn't know what product it was, but with a little like Google back searching, I was able to find that this is the Illustra Architectural Blind from Hunter Douglas. It just sounds expensive, doesn't it? And if that name sounds expensive, it is. I'm not entirely sure how this product is constructed, but there's sort of two things that stood out to me about this image that I really liked. The first is those horizontal lines across the center that feel kind of Japanese inspired, kind of zen, which if you've been following along with my home renovation, you may know that that's one of the inspiration points for my bedroom. So we love that. And second, I like in this particular image that the blinds are hung slightly down from the top of a window. I haven't seen this done very often, but I think it gives it more of a custom look. Something about everything being at the top the window feels very top heavy and very like, hello, I am a roller shade. And when it's hung further down, it feels a little bit less like a roller blind and a little bit more like a screen. It's just harder to place. So the theory here is that we're gonna use this semi-transparent light filtering shade from Ikea. We're gonna hang it slightly down from the top of the window and build a little simple box to go in front of it to make it feel really built in. And then we're gonna find a way to create those horizontal lines across the center so that it gets that architectural look as well. I picked up the San Vidal roller shade in the Aziz section at my local Ikea store. It's regularly priced at 35, but I picked it up for 25. Score. I was visiting the Aza section to pick up a couple other items that I needed and I just saw this there and it was perfect. It was also kind of crazy when I was picking up my things, the guy that was working in the Aza section recognized me. Apparently Ikea shared my Ikea Aza's video with their employees. And since that video went live, the Ikea Atlanta store, which is my store, now has the highest Aza sales of any Ikea store in the nation. Pretty cool. If you're not sure how to shop Ikea Aziz online or you want to try that out, definitely go check out that video. Keep in mind that the online Aziz reservation process is still pretty new and it seems like they still have some kinks to work out. You can only reserve one item at a time, so I often end up with like 8,000 confirmation emails. And in each confirmation email, it doesn't tell you what product you reserved or how much you reserved it for. So there's still some things to be worked out there. Hey Ikea, if you're watching, can we work on that? I will also add to that video that buyers, please be sure that you're inspecting the products really well before you take them home. I got the San Vidal blind home and realized that it had no hardware in it. You can order spare replacement parts online, but they were out of stock online. And then I called the store and they said they had it in the store, but then my parents went all the way there and they didn't have it. So they ended up pulling out hardware from another piece, so I have what I need. But moral of the story, when you're shopping as is, just inspect the item really carefully to be sure that it is what you think it is. So for this project, we have the San Vidal blind that can be cut down to fit my window width. I picked up a 50 foot roll of three quarter inch birch veneer edging on Amazon for $10. And then we're gonna use a really thin board that we had on hand to build the box around. I'm also gonna be using some paints that I had on hand to kind of finish everything off and make it look good with my space. But yeah, I'm really hoping that this works out and that it looks good. Let's find out. We're gonna give this idea a go for the one window in my bedroom. And if we like how it turns out, I'll do the four windows in the studio. First, let me go ahead and say that reading the instructions is a great idea when it comes to any IKEA related project, and we kind of failed to do that, so there are multiple unnecessary steps in this process. I'll try to keep it clear and simple just in case you're following along, but also know that mistakes happen and there are always solutions. On that note, let's remove this little silver pole and paint it. Silver is not the vibe for my bedroom, let's go for oil rub bronze instead. Much better. Now let's cut the blind down to make it fit inside the window casing. The blind was 32 and a half inches wide and my window is 31 and a half, so taking off an inch should do the trick. Unless you read the instructions and see that there should be a larger gap on either side. So we end up cutting this again later. Now we need to do a little test on the scrap fabric. The theory is that the thin veneer wood strips should bond to the fabric with the iron, just as they would bond to the edges of wood for their intended use. The product came with basically no instructions, despite my efforts to read them this time, and so I was just guessing when it came to temperature. I found that the wool setting, which is the medium temp on my iron, worked pretty well. And it seems to bond just fine. This is a small and short piece, so the longer strips might still want to curl. Again, this is where the experimental part comes in. So this is always the point in the process where we're trying to do something new and we're not sure it's going to work out. And it's like, 
do I want to burn the $25 on the blind and the $10 on the veneer just to have this like fold up and not roll and not stick and not be flat. So I'm feeling a little bit nervous about this right now getting started, but this is what we do here, right? We take chances and so we're going to see if this works. Let's do it. Several big design decisions had to happen right here at the beginning. First, I decided I wanted the veneer to be on the back side of the blind since it felt a little too obvious on the front and didn't have that luxe feel of the Illustre blinds. The adhesive is very consistent on the back, so it looked okay in my test swatch. So we're starting on the back side where the fold at the bottom is seamed. We apply the first piece inside that fold between the two layers so that the transparency will read the same as the rest of the slats. With the first slat in place, we use the six inch clear ruler that we use to cut the blind as a spacer between the rows. This turned out to be significantly easier than marking each row and the six inch spacing looks perfect. Now that we have a handle on the process, let me show you what we're doing. I was lucky to have my mom helping me out with this. It's doable with just one person, but it went much quicker with an extra set of hands to keep everything in place. First, we cut the strip just longer than the blind to give a little extra wiggle room. Then we press the ruler up against the previous row and line up the new piece on the other side, being sure the wood reaches all the way over both ends. I start from one end pressing the iron over the veneer and move across to the other side smoothing down the wood and gradually removing the ruler. Once I cover the whole area briefly to tack it down, I clip off the excess and go over it again to press it in more firmly. Since the fabric is pretty sheer and light, I have some old kitchen towels underneath to prevent the veneer from sticking to the ironing board. Occasionally the veneer would stick to the towels a bit, but it was easy to pull away. Okay, so the ironing process actually worked surprisingly well. We opted to put the veneer on like the wrong side of the blind, which you can tell by like the way that the bottom has a seam, but that means that it's rolling the wrong way because we want it to roll over and not under. And so we're gonna have to do a little bit of work tomorrow to kind of play around with that and make it roll up the right way. But all in all, I'm feeling really relieved and I'm thinking this is gonna work out just fine. Yay. Now that we're getting ready to mount the blind, we realize that we need to cut it more. So off comes that extra inch. Sharp scissors should work just fine for this, but a rotary blade and mat is much quicker. These are just great tools to have on hand, especially if you're planning to cut multiple blinds. It was easy enough to cut through the thin veneer, so that was no big deal, but save yourself the extra step and get the measurements right the first time. In order to clear the lower part of the window, we wanted the blind to roll over rather than under, so it needs to detach from the pole to roll up without creasing. After some trial and error and then turning the pole around, we managed to flip it over and reattach it with some packing tape. Following the product instructions, my dad marked the cut for the pole and cut down both the pole and the clear plastic piece that weighs down the bottom. After a little sanding to remove any rough edges, we can reinsert the end hardware and plastic strip. And now that we have the blind rolling the right way, I hit it with the iron again to smooth out any wrinkles and help the veneer mold to the curve. Heating it up and gradually rolling it will allow it to cool with a slight curve that will keep the roll nice and tight. And now we install. This is one of those things that took forever, figuring out the placement on the window, shaving down the plastic brackets for them to fit inside the casement, 
rehanging the brackets when we realized they weren't level and the shade wouldn't roll straight, but eventually we got it right, and I'm gonna gloss over that process since it's pretty unique to my window. The little box is made from an old windowsill molding for the front, a piece of quarter inch plywood for the top, and two little blocks that hook onto the brackets. The blocks had to be clipped down on an angle off camera to help the shade roll, but with a little trim paint and a lot of effort, this looks amazing. Final step was to reattach that plastic pull piece that I painted at the very beginning, which now does not fit since we put the veneer inside the bottom fold of the blind. <sighs> Despite trying lots of different ways to slide it on, it just would not fit, so we're gonna leave it off. I think the bottom row of veneer was necessary, so no regrets. And now we're done. All right, everybody, this roller shade is done, and I think it looks fantastic. My big takeaways here and my words of advice to you if you're trying this project are just the basics. Be sure to make sure there's all the parts before you buy anything in the as-is section. Read the instructions so you don't have to do the same steps over and over. Hang the blind level so that it rolls up straight. And if you're attaching a strip across the bottom, don't bother with that little clip thing because it won't fit on there. But with that all being said, the part that I was worried about, which was actually how the veneer was going to attach, was great. Fantastic hack if you want to add a little bit of dimension to a roller blind. Super simple, no so, cost effective. If you love how this project turned out and you decide to give this a try, be sure to let me know in the comments. I love hearing about your experience trying these projects. And if you want to see more progress on my home renovation, be sure that you're subscribed. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys soon.